Hi. How are you? We're here for an AC tune-up. Yes. Shall we come in? Yes. It's a little raining. I got a mat. Can I? Uh, oh, sure, sure. You're going to be right in the way, though. Oh, Want to okay. step up a step? Yeah, no problem. Okay, thank you. How are you doing today, sir? Good, good, yeah. So, uh, central air conditioning, yes? Yes, yes. Okay. And um, indoor and outdoor units? Uh, yeah, I have, I have uh, uh, four or five ton outdoor, then okay. I have uh, some units upstairs. Okay. When's the last time it was serviced? Uh, last summer. Okay, by us? Uh, no, the company that I use went out of business. So oh, that you guys, sucks. You, you guys were recommended. Oh, who recommended it to us? Um, a neighbor. Uh, uh, a na yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a Correct. Um, all right, so we're going to put some booties on. Um, okay. Show me where the thermostat is and the filter, and then how to get into the attic or where the unit is. Okay, sure. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Where did he go? Oh, here's the filter. filter, perfect. Uh, here's the thermostat. Excellent. And here's the attic. Perfect. Okay. And let's take a look at your filter. By the way, I'm Mike, by the way. Oh, nice to meet you. You too. Yeah. How are you doing? How old is the filter? Um, I think it was changed actually last summer. How many times a year do you change it? Um, usually once a season. Okay. Good filters. Any reason why you said good filters? Yeah. Any reason why you buy these filters? It was recommended. Why is that a bad filter? Well, there's pros and cons to everything. Okay. The con to this, well, the pro to this filter is it offers a, a great uh, mechanism to capture, you know, the particles in the air. Right. Uh, it's pleated, as you can see, looks like an accordion. Yeah. And it has a very large surface area. Uh, the pros, the, the cons to it is that they're very expensive, and they still should be changed every thirty days. Oh, you're supposed to change it every thirty days. It's supposed to. Oh, okay. Um, I, think, we, I, think it, I think it says every couple. It of months. does say every couple of months, but oh. are they the ones paying for your electric bill? No. Okay. Right. The reason why I say that is the increased surface area will capture more dirt and dust, right? right which will decrease airflow as more dirt ac accumulates across it. Like if you change it once a month, obviously you're not, you're not going to have like three months of accumulation on it. But if you change it once a month, you'll have more airflow through the system because the decreased airflow will cause the compressor to run longer because you're not cooling the air or extracting the heat from the air like you normally would with a, you know, better, better uh, air movement. Gotcha. It's better. I know it sounds crazy, yeah. but even though this is a $20 filter, it's better to, to get those dollar filters, $2 filters. You can get them on our website too, pipetalk.net, right. under, under About Us and then Shop. Okay. You can get a case for like 50 bucks. Okay, gotcha. Versus a couple for like 100 Right, I agree. Right? Okay. Just word, this is a word of advice. I like to educate. Because like like uh, Cy Sims, you know, educated consumers, my best yeah, customer. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Right. So we'll change the filter view, but okay. just keep that in mind. If you like it, I'm not here to change your mind. I'm not here to reinvent the wheel, but right. I'm just here to give you some professional advice. Because yeah, it, yeah. it's so, better to throw it out every 30 days right. and for a fraction of the cost. Yeah, so I'll use these up. And then yeah, I'll perfect. So. Peter's removing the screw that's holding one side of this return. And I'm going to take this filter out. You have that one clip there. Okay, good. That's going to drop. Excellent. So, so, let's take a look at this filter. Not terrible. Not terrible. Okay. And here's another one. Make sure we pay direction to the arrow. It needs to be facing away from you, pointing up. Okay. And does he make it? Yes. And he makes it in. If oh, it didn't, no, you don't, because it, it works. Oh, if no, it didn't, I always put the, I always yeah, put the screw in. When it, yeah, when, oh, yeah. Yep. when it first goes on, it's really powerful. perfect. And if you're having difficulty, you can always turn the fan on, Peter, mm -hmm. and it will suck in the filter. Yeah. So I was, I was, uh, I got a little sidetracked this, this, when I when I left the truck. Here's my card and his oh, magnet for you. Oh, thank you. So thank you're you. welcome. So, so you know who I am. Yes. All right, let's get up here. And the light is right on the... Perfect, thank you. All right, let's close that right there. Perfect, and let's head up to the attic. Wow, look at that, perfect. All right, he's got an older R22 system, it looks like. What a nice, beautiful attic. All right, let's just do a visual inspection. We have some three-quarter PVC going to some ABS, black ABS plastic. We have an 18-inch return there. It looks like maybe even 20-inch. This is an old York, 240 volt 
air handling unit. Duct work looks pretty intact. Typical main plenum, followed by all the takeoffs, the branches, going to each diffuser or each room. Line set, that's the front of the house. Line set travels, looks like, let's see where that travels. Let me get some light over there. Line set travels, look to like the back left-hand corner, possibly the back of the house. That's a cathedral ceiling skylight for a kitchen area, possibly. We have a brand new attic exhaust, uh, attic exhaust fan. It's set for 120 degrees. Perfect. Another thermostat with fire stat. That's oh, pretty cool. And there's a switch for that. Make sure the switch is in the on position, which it appears to be. Perfect. And the duct work overall, we are separated right there so we probably want to um well, maybe get some duct tape we'll tie this up together if we had some seven inch piece of seven inch uh, flue pipe we could put that in there as a liner and then secure this but let's uh, grab some duct tape and re-secure that and yeah we'll check this out blow out the lines and All be right. good to go so first things first now he made, an, he made a mention that he does have it checked out every year and not terrible, but we would need to disconnect this union or this coupling here and blow through both directions in and out. Make sure that's clear. Now that that's the part, nice now we got to blow. Looks like they had it secured with this. Clamp. Looks like they had a clamp there at one point. Oh, wow. The definition of a clamp was a, uh, that. Oh, it just fell apart. You gotta push it back together. Okay. So let's push that back together. Mm -hmm. Clamp that back down. Do you know where the clamps are in the truck? Clamps like this? The hose clamps? Like that? Uh, where are they? Like that. I don't think we have one that large. Let's clamp that back in and we're gonna blow through this. I left the gallon gun in the truck, so there's always plan, plan B. <laughs> Improvise. Well, Peter's resecuring the, I guess, Fernco coupling on that three quarter primary condensate drain. I was looking behind there and I found another one disconnected. So, it leads me to believe that it's been neglected. So we're gonna resecure that one as well. Let's let the customer know. So a little bit of an update. Okay. Um, we blew out the condensate drain line. The primary was clogged because it was hard to you know blow through it. The drain line. Okay. Um, not really. You know, we typically see that. Uh, more of a bigger concern for me is uh, there's a duct over here and there's one behind the unit that is disconnected from the ducts are disconnected. Why are disconnected? It's, it fell falling apart. Um, so we're going to grab some, uh, special tape. Uh, it's not duct tape. People think it's duct tape, but it's different, <laughs> uh, to resecure that. Um, the duct work's not in bad shape, but listen, overall the system is aged. You know, if this was, you know, my parents own house, I would say, listen, when you, when you got to put some major money into this, that's the time to replace it. Right. So, um, you know, if, until it works great, you know, when it dies and you need to replace something major, that's going to be the time to replace the system and, you know, re, you know, modernize the duct work. Um, you know, like the drain lines, the drain lines are from like the sixties and seventies, you know, that go outside. They've adapted to it over the years, you know, but the original drain lines are still there. Um, the overall condition of the unit, you know, I wouldn't say is in, in, in good condition. I can say it's in poor condition. So let's say it's fair. It's been, it's been duct taped together and literally it's duct taped together. Um, the duct work, you know, for the most part is okay, right. you know, but this is duct work from, you know, like the 1980s, right. you know, the energy efficiency laws that we had then and the R values or the insulation values of the duct work, right. you know, it's fine then, but today this, you know, you're losing so much energy, you know, by, of a hot attic, um, even though you have attic fans up there, you know, they, they trip off at 120 degrees, right. you still have 119 degrees, if not a little bit lower of of heat radiating into those that poorly insulated ductwork, right. which then gives you warmer air coming out of the vents. Right. 
Right. I'm not saying that's warm air. I'm saying it's warmer air. So instead of being, let's say, if it's 70 in here, it's blowing out at 50 or 55. Right. It may be blowing out at 60 or 65. Right. So you're just losing money. That's right. all. Make sense? Yes. Okay, very good. So I sent Peter to the truck. He's going to get some of that special mastic tape. We're going to tape, tape up that. I almost completely disconnected over there. Okay. I'll take a picture and, and I'll show it to you. Okay. And the one over here is just like falling apart. So right. we're going to tape that back together. Other than that, you know, it's... You know, it's living on a, on, a, on a shoestring and some bubble gum. But as long as it works for now, it's, that's all that matters to me. So you recommend replacing what next season? When you need... <clears throat> well, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> it was dusty up there. You can, re you can replace preventatively. Right. You, know, you know, preventatively to spare yourself the aggravation of a dead system in, on the hottest day of the year or, or during right. a heat wave. Right. Uh, and to save money, you know, on and your energy bills. I haven't even seen outside yet, but... Right. We'll see what we see outside. Okay. Um, but so, most, you know, no, normally, like in the off season, when we replace systems, yeah, I replace systems like in the in the summertime when they're dead. Right. You don't want to never want to do that. You always want to plan ahead so you can budget and it just you know, you know, just be forewarned, I guess. Right. So, I would recommend plan for it. Right. You know, and go from there. Gotcha. Cool. All right, so we're back up in the attic, and I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel here. You gotta get one in there. Yeah, get one in there. A little tape. Mm -hmm. All right, so we resecured this one best we can given the circumstances. So now we have one more left to do, which is over here. Gotta love my OSHA approved plywood flooring in the attic here always exercise caution when traveling across ceiling joists okay so now we're here I got my booties on of course I'm gonna reconnect this whatever you do Peter don't fall through the ceiling well more put a foot through it we're gonna reconnect this all right that's secure Let's get out of here. So that's secure. And so is that one. Let's go downstairs and head on to the outdoor unit. All right. It's a good thing. That means we have 24 volts. That means we have line volts to the blower. Now the thermostat is on. What do you have it set to? Uh, 66, maybe 72 in here. Okay, I'll lower it to maybe 64. Because now we're going to head on outside. No, you can actually, you can hear the unit vibrate. I can feel it vibrating in my head. Yeah. That's the, uh, oh, you, hear, you, can, you can feel that vibration. Yeah, but like, 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 like when I take, you can see like when I take off, like some like this mirror. Do you feel, you, you feel it here? Maybe you're used to it. Yeah. How long have you lived here for? Uh, my whole life. Okay. <laughs> but I find that like when I, when I take off certain paintings, like it, it, it goes down. Okay. You think that's because when of the unit? That is the unit, for sure, 100%. Oh, oh, 1,000%. Right. There's, oh. no, there's no question it's the oh, unit. Oh, so like taking off some of the paintings? No, and, and I guarantee you when, if it was installed with, you know, it was all proper. I'm not saying it's installed improperly, but if it was installed yeah. with, you know, like, all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed, and there's yeah. vibration pads on everything. Yeah. Right now, you have this unit, which is, you know, from the 80s, resting yeah. on basically the inside of a rusted metal pan, right. which is then resting on the ceiling joists above, right. and it's vibrating through the house. And it, it all comes down to too much dirt and dust inside the blower wheel. Right. Um, I would be inclined to go inside that blower, you know, the unit in the attic, but it's yeah. duct taped together. Right. Seriously. It's, so it's there's literally, no way to reduce that sound. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, we, we, you know, if you wanted to invest money into it, yes, we can make that noise go away. But when the system is replaced, a thousand percent will be gone. You won't even know it's on. So how, how much would it be to make that? Let's see what you let's see. Oh, to, to, to modernize what you have or to replace what you have? Uh, to modernize what I have. Um, you know what? We have, we have play in the duck work. Really not that much. Ready, Peter? And getting a whole new unit is very expensive. What's the definition of expensive? Yeah, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Put it this way, if, if you said very expensive, 
three and a half, four years ago, yeah. I'd be like, no. Right. Now, because yeah. the, 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 the way the price, yeah, the inflation yeah. and the yeah. cost of material, you know, now when I buy equipment, like from Carrier, we were a yeah. Carrier dealer. Right. Uh, we're also a Bosch dealer, right? right. Um, on, there's a line on when I buy equipment, and it's called temporary inflation surcharge. Right. By the way, which has existed for a year now. So right. what, it's not that's not so temporary. It's more like permanent. Yeah. But they're adding, they're basically adding like six, seven percent to every invoice wow. to recover I don't know, whatever they were trying to recover. Right. Even though their equipment went through the roof anyway, you right. know, twenty five, thirty percent increase over the last four years. It's kind right. of, it's kind of gross. Yeah. Oh, there goes a little wetness, Peter. There it is. This looks like a weather king. Thermal. Climate, thermal zone, thermal zone, yeah. Wow. It's a thermal zone. All right, we'll be here. 2012. Wow. All right, so that old disconnect panel. Hose is turned off. That means it needs to be turned off. Well, let's take a look at the coil. You know, he has, he is saying it's being serviced every year. And if you look inside, they've been servicing it every year. Not that much dirt in there, considering we're under a tree. A conifer. This is a conifer. Looks like a conifer. Ah, okay. So, let's get a quarter inch driver, small one. I'm gonna take off the panel to access the electrical compartment. And uh, we're going to see what's going on with this thing. All right, so I took off the electrical compartment cover. We have a hard start in here. We have a capacitor. There's our contactor. The contactor looks fairly newish. And uh, let's read into this model number. And if you could see, it's TZAA. Um, but what we're looking for is that, zero, uh, that uh, 360. So this is a... This is a 5 ton. Uh, it could be a three ton. I don't know. We'd have to look at the compressor, actually. Um, but it's matter of fact, date of March 2012. And uh, what does that? Um, this could be a this could be a five ton because we have seven eighths line set. But we're gonna have to look at the compressor. So let's take off the top cover. Want well, to get a, get a picture of the compressor? It's a Copeland, maybe. Yeah, it looks like a Copeland scroll compressor. And then for that, we'll be able to ascertain because I can't determine what that is unless I Google it, maybe. Could be three ton, could be five ton. The 60, the 60,000 BTUs, the 36, is 36,000 BTUs. Carefully lifting up the cover. And ironically enough, you know, one of the things we not we see a lot of times, especially on reams, is oil residue here at the, uh, around the, 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 the bottom of the condenser fan motor. But this one, no oil residue. That means it's still sealed. Or the old, or, the, or it's so old, the oil residue has has <laughs> evaporated, <laughs> has been long gone. But uh, we also grabbed the picture of the the Copeland scroll compressor. There, that is a ZR fifty four K five PFV one thirty. So now we can identify the size of the condensing unit by the compressor. All right, let's put that back down carefully and secure that back down. And then we're going to do our due diligence and test the test the uh, resistance on the coil of the 24 volt contactor and we'll take a peek at the capacitance of the capacitor and we'll use a fluke multimeter um, instead of like a capacitor test. So I like using real tools. Now I'm not saying that using a capacitor tester to test the capacitance of the capacitor is not a real tool but come on you're gonna have one tool dedicated just to testing capacitors and eh, I prefer using a multimeter because it's a multi functional tool and it has multiple things having this little $50 gizmo uh, whatever and half the time you push on them you know what I mean every time you push on you get a different you get different uh, reading off of it so just kind of like it is nothing against subco I love subco right but eh, not for me maybe for you but not right, for me Peter is going to carefully remove the gray so not the gray the yellow and the brown wire and making sure that he does not touch those wires with anything else to ground out the fuse or blow the fuse in the air handler. So when you take that off, make sure that, 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 make sure that wire doesn't go anywhere it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Make sure it hangs out somewhere, it doesn't touch anything metal. Very good, there's one. 
and then I remove the yellow wire in the same fashion. Remember, make sure you don't touch anything metal. This is like a game of operation, ladies and gentlemen. This is like a game of operation. People, you almost touched that piece of metal to that right there. All right, it's like a game of operation. I know you can do it. And if he doesn't, you'll see the zap on camera right now. Okay, now, put that somewhere so it's out of the way. Oh, right there's good. Okay, now you're gonna take your Fluke. This is the 902 FC. True RMS, HVAC clamp on multimeter. We're gonna set that to read uh, ohms or resistance. And we're gonna check the resistance rating of the coil. So Peter's got the, the leads on one side of the coil and the other where those 24 volt wires were. And we're getting 14.4 ohms. And that's a good, that's a good uh, coil on that capacitor. Contactor, sorry. That's good, 14.4. So now carefully yep. reattach those wires. This is like the operation. Now that you're the surgeon, stitch it back up. It's not going to bite you. It's only 24 volts. Good. Okay, now the other one. That's good, man. That's normal. <laughs> but guys, he jumped. He jumped. he jumped like a pig and shit. Oh, I'm trying to keep it family oriented. Sorry. <laughs> if your eight year old is watching this, they'll understand because this is how we talk in the trade sometimes. Come on, Peter. Let's get it in there. It's the angle. I don't want to touch so, the angle. So push, push the pins back, the terminals. Push them out of the way a little bit. More towards the, the unit itself. Yeah. The, the capacitor, I mean. I mean, the contactor. Bend it in. There you go. Not gonna bite. Keep. That didn't. You didn't move it. Didn't? No. There we go. All right. He'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. He'll get it. I guarantee he's gonna get it. And he got it. Very good. Okay. And a little bit of a hum from the contactor. So let's just do. All right. A little bit of a bang on it. Okay, next, we're going to test our dual capacitor. All right. Leverage, Peter. There you go. So we removed all the wires. The purple was on Herm. Mm -hmm. The brown was on Fan. And the Two hard start was between that. Common and Herm, which is compressor. And our oranges, I believe, were on common. Yeah. So now that those are all out, we're going to undo that screw and slide that thing like I'm going to slide out of your girl's DMs. <laughs> all right. Taking out those two little star screws right there. And we're going to slide out that dual capacitor. Oh, yeah. She's an 8010. Look at this. Is that an 8010? Yeah. 8010, yep. This is definitely a five-ton system. Big you can tell by that size of the capacitance of the compressor side. Well, what do you think? What do we think this is gonna read at? Well, she's not Prager, she's not swollen it looks like, but I'm gonna guess that we may need to replace this bad boy. And if we do, I'm gonna show you the right way of putting it back in. So this is an 8010. This is by CSC. It said it has no PCBs in it, and that's probably true. But we're, uh, the rating is 80 over 10 or 80 plus 10. The plus or minus 6% at 370 VAC. So we have a few terminals on the top here. You can tell this is probably about 12 years old. That says fan. And normally with fan, you have two terminals on fan. With common, which is what that says, a little C right there. This has four terminals, and that's always uh, common. And this is three, and this is HERM. HERM, right, stands for Hermetically Sealed Compressor. So now Peter is gonna use the Fluke 902FC that he've been using to test resistance. He's gonna set that to capacitance, which is that little doodad signal right there. And he's gonna go between each of the terminals, starting with C to whatever he wants, which is fan. And we have 10.3. Okay, right. so that's good, plus or minus 6%. And we have C to Herm, and we're getting 83.2. Surprisingly, surprisingly, this is a good capacitor. Now, one thing I wanna check is, shake it and it's oh you can hear it in there you can hear that liquid in there hear it yep. so even though it's reading good right now 
we're going to recommend a replacement of this. Now, before we go back inside, we've already uh, checked everything else out because I don't like to go back and forth. We'll give them one diagnosis. You know, we were inside. We gave them the diagnosis after we checked everything out. We spoke to them. We saw the two ductworks that were disconnected. We reconnected them. Here we're outside. We already tested the resistance of the contactor. The fan appears to be operational. It was running when we got here. The only thing we did not check yet is refrigerant levels. And I'm inclined not to test, but what we will... It's a little cool out right now, but we are going to make them aware of this, so let's go do that right now. We should make sure we have an 8010 dual capacitor, right? And I'm pretty sure we do. All right, so here's my tray of dual capacitors, most of them at least. Here is the one that we took out of the unit, the 8010. Here's my Amarad, right? Huge difference. Huge difference. Let me ask you something. If this is your house, and I say, listen, you need a new, your capacitor is, is on its way out, I recommend the new one. What's the first thing, of course, your mind is going to go through your mind? Wow, why is that thing so big? Well, that's what she said, right? <laughs> no, but this is this is a, this is an amazing thing. What's even better about this is we can even talk about the hard start. But I don't want to confuse them. But when we wire in that hard start, it goes to the CPT terminal or compressor protection terminal, right? What that terminal does, if this if it senses there's a problem, it's going to turn off that hard start, preventing that thing from blowing up and preventing major, more problems. So. That's what that is right there, that CPT terminal, and it's only available on the AMRAD. Made in the U.S., Capacitors, a global company. All right. The only thing outside that we have not tested yet is refrigerant levels. I normally like to do a visual inspection of everything, okay. and then I test electrical components. Okay. Uh, you have a component, I'll give you a quick, you want a summary version, or you just want just the guts? What do you think is best? I like to educate. Okay. So you sound like you sound like an educated guy, so you maybe you can understand this. Okay. okay. The unit comes on yeah. uh, by a, basically a, a glorified switch. Okay. Uh, so we test this switch, okay. and it's supposed to read a certain rating, yeah. or like wattage or voltage, right. and it's good. Okay. It's not what it does, but it's, we test something else called the resistance. Okay. Great. And it's good. Okay. Good. Then we test a. We look at the motor. The okay. fan, the condenser fan motor, and yeah. making sure. That's this, my motor? No, no, it's not the motor. Then, then we test the motor and make sure that it's spinning freely. Make sure there's no oil, oil residue dripping from it because right. a lot of, especially the reams. I, I know it says Thermal King, but it's made by a ream. Oh, okay. um, a lot of times, you know, there's, you know, over years, the the packing uh, sealants inside the motor itself, you know, break, you know, wear wear out, and it starts yeah. dripping oil, and it doesn't yeah. oil residue on it, and that right. just means that it's going to die soon. Right. Soon could be a few years though. Right. But when it dies, you know, hopefully it doesn't take the compressor with it. Right. Okay. Another thing we test for is a capacitor. Right. A capacitor gives the, these two motors. One motor is the fan motor and the right. other motor is the compressor. Right. It gives it more oomph. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we test it kind of like a 9-volt battery. If right. a 9-volt battery is reading 6 volts, it means it's dying. Right. right. You need to replace the 9-volt battery. Right. Um, but also, if you shake the 9-volt battery yeah. and you hear a liquid inside of it, it means it's dying soon, oh, right? Yeah. So this capacitor, which is the original one with your system, yeah. tested perfect, oh. but it's, you can hear it liquid inside. Um, so I would recommend changing this with Academic. Grab that. With this. Okay. Now, it's the same exact specification, but this is like double the size. Okay. It's made in America. Right. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, and that wasn't? Um, probably not. Probably China. Okay. Not that it makes a difference, but yeah. uh, uh, this thing is guaranteed for a lot longer than that thing was. Okay. Even though this thing is still good. So if you, if it's meaning, so you, you, you hear hard liquid, meaning that, that was good. It's on its way out. Oh. It still tests fine. Normally when you hear the liquid, it doesn't read well either, but we hear the liquid and it's reading well. Okay. Um, you also have one other component, which you may or may not be made aware of. It's what we call a hard start. A okay. uh, hard start is installed on some motors, compressors, for example, okay. when, when this capacitor that you have there yeah. is not enough for it anymore. Okay. Um, and in order to get the system going or buy yourself some more time, us contractors, we add a hard start. Okay. So for example, um, last week I went to a customer's home, the circuit breaker was tripped to their AC unit outside. Okay. Um, we couldn't find the breaker, the electrician comes, he finds it. He tests the uh, he tests system and, and, it tri and it trips the breaker right away. The compressor does. Right. So I went out there and we found the compressor was hard starting. It was actually seized up. It wouldn't turn over. So I, I added a hard start and I saved him three thousand bucks. Oh. Okay. The cost of a new compressor. Right. <laughs> right. Or a new system. Right. Right. Um, 
you have a hard start installed in your system, which means the compressor that's there um, no longer needs that, needs a little bit more. Okay. Sometimes a lot more. What's great about this, unlike all the other ones, it has a terminal for that hard start. Right. Designed to shut off that hard start if the compressor's dying, or, or the compressor's kaput, preventing the, the hard start from exploding. Okay. So yeah. I'd recommend replacing this. This is not like a major repair. You know, it's not that expensive, but it's a couple hundred bucks. Um, but it's, it's something that you should replace, because when that dies, it's gonna be in the hottest day of the year. Yeah. When this dies, it'll be several years from now. It'll, you'll probably replace the system before you replace this again. Right. So All right, that? Peter. So we got approval for the capacitor replacement. So let's take this off there. All right, take that little sticker off. Now, we're gonna stick this in there, slide that in there, and secure it with the two screws. You're gonna see, it slides right in there. Look at that, perfect. Excellent, now we're gonna use those two uh, star screws to secure that to the chassis or the cabinet. All right, so there is our brand new AMRAD 80 over 10 dual capacitor. Peter secured the brown wire to fan. We have one wire of the hard start going to Herm. Is that Herm or Common? Let's see, what does that say? I think the metal is Common. That's Herm. So on Herm, we have the purple wire and we have a black wire from the um, hard start. On the opposite side, that's our compressor terminal, uh, protection terminal, that has the other wire. Is that where you hooked it up to? Is that where it says it belongs? Yeah. So it's one, two, the... So we have attached one wire of the hard start to CPT terminal, attach the other wire to the Herm terminal. Perfect, okay, very nice. Okay, and we have our other wires. All right, those two orange wires are on common. So we're just gonna put that right back in there. It's all made of plastic. I'm not worried about that too much. Let's shove that right in there. Okay, now very carefully, we're gonna reapply power. And the right way is using my right hand behind my uh, back, my right hand to put it, my left hand behind my back. So I'm gonna do that like there. And you should not be wearing gold. And voila, it works. All right, so now we're gonna use the smart probes by Testo to test our refrigerant with minimal refrigerant loss. I have my probes on the service ports for the high and low side, and I have my clamp on temperature probes. I'm connected to the smart probes app. Now, it's a little cold outside. It is, uh, let's see what it is. It is 50 degrees outside right now, a quarter after nine in the morning. Wow, I've been here a little more than over, over an hour. All right, and taking a look at these uh, pressures, um, I, you know, it's a little too cold, so I really can't really check that well, but I'm looking at my low side pressure of 50, almost 54 to, uh, PSI, and my high side of, of 152. Um, we're okay, I'm, I'm comfortable with that, right? I'm not looking at subcool, I'm not looking at superheat right now. Um, my evaporated temperature, you know, 28 and a half degrees, condensing coil temperature, 83. Um, I'm not too concerned. With these numbers right here, honestly, um, it is 50 degrees outside, right? Yep, still 50 degrees. So let's remove our probes. You're gonna see she's starting to frost up a little bit right there. We're gonna get the brass caps with the brand new O-rings in there. I, I got them in the clear case. We'll take the eye off. Ah, got me a little bit. Take that off. And I like to keep them separate in the, in the, in the case. There's high, low, high, low, and uh, I like to use new uh, new service board caps. They don't have them with the O-rings. These don't have O-rings. And these uh, service board caps, that is your first line of defense against the leak. The Schrader core is not your first line of defense. The brass refrigeration service board caps, that is your first line of defense to preventing refrigeration leaks at these service ports. So make sure you use them. And the old ones, you know, chuck them in the Mongo pail because they are solid brass. All right, so I installed that uh, new capacitor in the outdoor unit. Okay. Um, running very well. Yes. Uh, it's a little cold out to check the refrigerant uh, pressures, you know, the levels of, of Freon, as you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, but I checked it anyway. And it, um, okay. it appears to be okay. Okay. Uh, again, it needs to be like seven degrees to really know what how the system's performing, but... Nothing out of the ordinary for okay. being 50 degrees outside. So, yeah. uh, and it's. And I've never had a problem with that. 
Boop, boop. Knock on wood, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, listen, it's 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 an old system. It's an old car, yeah. uh, but she's still chugging along. And right. uh, as long as you can afford the gas for it, then uh, you know when it dies and when you need like a major repair, like a compressor, or you start you're starting to need to add free onto the system, because yeah. that's what's gonna kill you. The cost of refrigerant, because uh, they don't make free on anymore. It's not made, so you can still buy it, but it's just very very expensive. Is it very expensive? Yeah. Right. So uh, yeah, I've actually I have not not knock on wood. I haven't need uh, free on in over ten years. So you needed it before. Not not in over ten years. With the old outdoor unit, maybe. Oh no! Actually, excuse me. Since they replaced um, the uh, the new compressor outside, I haven't need free on. Good. That, that's actually since. Uh, so before before Sandy, you you were adding Freon to the system to the to the old compressor yes. outside. But since that was replaced in two, you haven't had to add it since then. I haven't had. To okay, thank it. God, yeah. thank God, because that's what's that's what's going to be the killer. Yeah. Because when you need to add that, it's yeah. it's expensive. I had uh, I think a uh, uh, Yorks or a Lennox. York. Yeah. Because that's what matches upstairs. That's an old York yes. upstairs. Okay. Yep. So yes. So when they replaced it right after Sandy, I haven't needed to need. Uh, Perfect. You know, Freon. Yeah. But like I was saying earlier. Um, you should be planning for replacement and, and uh, planning accordingly. Uh, because when it goes, I, again, I, I would hate to see you be steered in the wrong direction or just take whatever was ever available to you. But remember, the duct work is you know, just as important as, you know, type of fuel that you put in your car. If your car requires, you know, good fuel, if you put in the stuff, the cheaper stuff, that's a little last until there's problems with the engine. Right. And I'm not saying that, that's a good analogy, but not like the system's going to die because you have horrible duct work. No, it's just going to cost you more well, to operate. Well, let me ask you another. Is there any way to do like good, like replace, uh, you know, like replacement, you know, stuff? That's what do you, you mean? You know, like good, like good, you know, like, like I've always, you know, like, like I got a new motor upstairs. Is there any way to go down that road also? Yeah, no. When you replace, when you replace the equipment, the system, like the outdoor and the indoor unit, that would be the perfect opportunity to change the duct work that point no no but but i'm saying like instead of doing a complete replacement is there any way to do like more like repair? i would not recommend because of the condition of the air handler and you know it's you'd be piecing to it'd be foolish to spend money doing that right you know like taping up to, listen if all the ductwork was falling apart right now right. and you say listen mike i'm not replacing my system but let's replace the ductwork okay i would do that Right. Because if the, if the ductwork is completely disintegrating and falling apart, you're, you're cooling the attic. Right. <laughs> you're not cooling the home. Right. But listen, having a couple ducts disconnected, listen, we, we reconnected them. We put right. some duct tape on it. So I and, and, and you're okay. But okay. listen, if we come back here next year and the more more falling apart, like, wait, listen, you, that you sh I, I'll, I'll just say, I, listen, I told you so. <laughs> right. You know, you got you to gotta do something so with it. So why do you think that happened? Uh, Age. is normal wear and tear. Right. Yeah. Well, one connection... You know, it's, uh, it basically fell apart because they joined two ducks together. It just fell apart. You know, gotcha. again, it's wear and tear. Gotcha. And it's not like someone pulled it apart. It's just wear and tear. Gotcha. But I wouldn't read too much into it. It's an, it's an old system. Right. You but, know? But, but 30... Why is there rust on the car that's 45 years old? It's an old 45-year-old car. Right. But 35000 wasn't my... Uh... No, I was just giving you that, that crazy number. Like, listen, right. if you want... Soup to nuts, you know, a crazy, a, a crazy hyper, right. a hyper efficient, you know, system that uses dual fuels, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. it heats the house and cools the house. Yeah, you get, they're up there in price. They are. Right. The equipment alone is like, you know, in, in, in up there in price. Right. But I'm just saying, I, I just gave you the extremes. Right. I like to always give extremes because if I'm lower, then okay, you're happy. Right. Well, actually All right, Peter. I think that was a great service call. We had not only educated the homeowner, but uh, you got a little bit more education, you know, more hands-on. You know, people are commenting that I need to let you use your hands more often. But what's also pretty cool is that I haven't I haven't had a customer use this coupon yet. You know, I advertise in the Nassau Herald, and it's a local weekly newspaper in the five towns and also in the Valley Stream area. But there's our ad, and it's uh, $50 off any service call. But it also has there our Long Island Award you know, by PSE&G, you know, Pipe Doctor for 2022 was voted the number one heating and air conditioning contractor on Long Island. The number one heating and air conditioning contractor on Long Island. That is awesome. And also, if you, if you ask the people at the Long Island Press, Pipe Doctor, and I don't know how this even happened, Pipe Doctor is the number one commercial refrigeration company on Long Island. 
cool. we hardly do any commercial refrigeration, but oh, commercial. I just yeah, you said commercial. And I'm right. like interesting, but uh, take a look at that. I have a QR code. You can scan that in. You can bring it to our YouTube page, our website, uh, the Mikey Pie Philanthropy Charitable Organization. In case you guys don't know, that is a uh, a 501c3 charity that I started where our goal, our mission is to provide free or low cost plumbing, heating, cooling services to those in the community who can't afford it. Check it out. Uh, Mikey Pies Philanthropy uh, YouTube channel and um, link in the description box down below. Pipesforfree.org. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time watching uh, one of my channel, uh, one of my videos on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button and consider hitting that subscribe button down below, along with the notification bell to get post notifications when I post a video, which is almost on a daily basis. Uh, it would really help me out and on our road to a million subscribers. That's the next goal. That's the next milestone. We're at 137,000, so the next milestone is a million subscribers. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well. God bless. Stay safe.